This CAM Photoshop tutorial is demonstrated in Adobe Photoshop CS3. Most or all of the techniques can be accomplished in previous versions of Photoshop. Welcome to CAM Photoshop, the destination for new adventures and creativity. Learn more at CAMPHOTOSHOP.com. Now, Adobe Certified Expert and Head Camp Counselor, Roger Ridpath. This is tutorial 003 and it's a continuation of tutorials 001 and 002. And why so serious? Well, I want to finish up this brick wall spray painting and uh, stenciling effect with uh, something kind of interesting here that I ran into on the net. This is a teaser poster for the new Batman movie, The Dark Knight. And we're not going to copy this exactly, but I thought I might show you how you might accomplish something like this with the brick wall that we've already been working with. Let's get over to Photoshop. And remember, if you want your workspace to look like my workspace, you need to go to Window, Workspace, Default Workspace. Now I'm going to be working today with the brick wall that we started out with in tutorial 001. I'm going to speed through some of this stuff because we've already been over it in tutorial 001 and 002. I think the best and fastest way to get to something that we want here is to do a lighting effect. Now what I want to do before we jump in and do that is I always like to duplicate the layer that I'm working on so that I can always go back and make some changes or we rework something if I need to. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to uh, go down here to the layer icon and just drag that base layer, the brick wall, and duplicate it. Then we want to go to our lighting effects. Now again, I covered this before, but what we want to do is go under Render Lighting Effects and I'm going to show just a few more things that we can do inside of this lighting effects window here. Once you're in here, there's a, there's a lot of options in here. Uh, let's look at getting a little bit of color in here. I want to work with the properties area. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here to show you this. I'm going to change my color here. The example that I showed has kind of a blue uh, tint to it. So I'm going to pick a blue here. Um, gosh, it looks a little bit bluish green. So maybe we go over in here somewhere. Um, we don't want too high, uh, a too intense of a hue. So I'm going to move down here just a little bit. So we've got kind of this darker green color. I'll zoom back out here just so you can see where we're at. So now you can see our wall has this little more mysterious look to it. Now, I, I pointed this out before, but let me zoom in again and uh, let you take a look at these. In the lighting effects area, you have these control points on your light itself. This is actually widening and uh, narrowing the beam of light for our spotlight, which is the default that's here. And that's, that's just what we're going to work with is the default spotlight right there. But I'm grabbing these, uh, these points, these control points on our light, and um, just kind of adjusting here. I'm going to zoom back out so that you can kind of see the whole picture here a little bit better. So that's a little too intense. So I'm going to change the exposure. I'm going to just pull the exposure down just a little bit. Uh, in this case, I'm going to get down. Uh, well, let's, let's go around a negative 30 right now and underexposed. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit more. I want to kind of get get some mysterious lighting going on here but I also want to light up the whole wall so you've got to do some tweaking here get a nice effect and uh, you can also adjust some of these other settings you can adjust the intense intensity a little bit a little more a little less uh, the focus of the beam of light 
You can make it a very narrow focus or a very wide focus. I'm going to pull it somewhere in the middle there because I, I kind of like that soft edge that we're getting off to the sides, which um, it's, it's similar to what you were seeing in the, the example that I showed. And um, sorry, let's uh, adjust our exposure just a little bit more. And our ambient light. I don't think we want to do too much there, but uh, we might want to move it just a tad to the positive just to give it a little more interesting look. Now here, let me zoom in. Let's show you the little secret key here. The texture channel. Again, I showed this before. You want to pick a texture channel for our lighting effect. Because this, the channels in this image are so similar, it probably won't make much of a difference as to what you pick, but I'm going to pick red because it typically has more contrast than some of the other channels. And let's zoom back out. Now you're not going to be able to see that effect inside of this window very well, but it did, uh, in the preview, it actually has taken effect, this uh, texture channel. But I'm going to hit the OK button. So Photoshop has done its magic and it's created this great textured, highlighted brick wall that you can see the light. Um, zoom in just a little bit. You can see how the, the uh, filter has actually picked up on the texture of the brick wall and created a lighting effect that mimics or follows, I shouldn't say mimic, but follows that texture. Let's get some artwork on this wall. Now the very first thing I want to do is I want to create a new layer so that I can work on my artwork separate from my brick wall. That I want to go over to the layer palette, create a new layer. And you'll see now we have a blank layer that we're going to work on for our drawing. So let's pick a brush to work with. Go to your toolbar and select the brush tool. And I'm going to pick the charcoal large smear brush. And I want to change that to about a 70 diameter. And that's related to the resolution of the image that we're working with. If you're working with a larger or smaller image, as far as the resolution itself, you may need to adjust that. I've got black selected as my foreground color. And let's start drawing. I'm just going to draw real loose and uh, have a little fun here. Um, by the way, I have my opacity on the brush set to 90% so that I won't be painting a solid black. And I want to paint real loose here. Uh, just try to have a little fun with this. And um, the looser this is in the end, I think the, the better it ends up looking. So I'm going to do a little over a few brush strokes that are kind of out and over um, where I want things just because I know I'm going to come back in and, and make some adjustments in, in some of the later steps here. And then I'm going to go over to my foreground color, double click on the uh, black color in the foreground. I'm going to pick a nice dark, kind of a blood red for my mouth. Let's let's get in here and make something. Let's do something kind of fun. Maybe a little Simpson-esque, Bart Simpson-esque. Now, of course, the Joker has a huge smile. I make this really big. And it uh, looks like the Joker is sticking his tongue out at us. Remember, loose is good here. So I'm just going to kind of Fill in a little bit of the mouth here and keep it pretty loose. And um, there we go. We've got we've got our face to work with. So let's take a little break. I'll see you on the other side at tutorial 004. You've reached the end of this camping trip. Hike over to campphotoshop.com where visitors can sign up for freebies and more video tutorials by Adobe Certified Expert and Camp Counselor, Roger Redpath. There you go, Roger.